Welcome back to Hoops Lounge, where the show with more moves than Boogie Cousins. My name is Mark Griffin, aka Montreal Mark. I'm joined by my partner in crime, uh, Phil Barlow Sporting. Phil, today we're talking the Dragon, uh, Gordon Dragic, who apparently is on the way out of Phoenix for the second time in his career. Phil, uh, Sam and Mick with uh, USA Today, who's a great guy, by the way, said that uh, there's seven teams, roughly, that Gordon's looking at right now. He does not want to re-sign with Phoenix. Why does he want out? Well, I think it's a combination of uh, there, there's too many kids in the pool at this point with the point guard situation between Isaiah Thomas, Eric Bledsoe, bringing in Tyler Ennis and himself. And um, you know what? It's also one of those things that anytime you hear your name being called out in trade rumors when you're about to sign a new contract, um, sometimes it rubs players the wrong way and it questions how much the team really wants you there long term. So I think the combination of those two is why he's looking for greener pastures. Okay, as I mentioned, uh, there's about seven teams in the run and earning roughly. I mean, this is all a rumor mill that we say, basically. And I'm also hearing that Isaiah Thomas, you know, they could trade Isaiah Thomas right now to appease uh, Gorn, but apparently he doesn't want that either. Apparently it's like his way or the highway. Of these scenarios that are being floated around, which one is uh, intriguing you the most? Uh, one of the ones that I heard of late, actually, was um, to, follow, to follow George Carl in Sacramento. Yeah. Uh, Sacramento actually has a ni bunch of nice young pieces, uh, which could fill some spots uh, for the Phoenix roster, uh, especially maybe uh, Stauskas or Ben McLemore bringing some shooting from that backcourt. Because uh, they have a lot of tiny guards, having a, a legit two might be nice there, um, as long as well with some forwards. I think that's one of the more interesting. I uh, heard about Boston. I, I think at 28 years old, it's kind of a Kyle Lowry effect. He kind of has to go into a team that you know is ready to make that next step right now. And I'm not sure that Boston is. Uh, we've heard New York, but with Melo being down for the season, I don't think that's a great fit as well. I, I, I think there's going to be a lot of teams looking to acquire him. Uh, uh, but it's more of a question of where he's going to sign long term. I mean, anytime you get a nice player in the last year of his career, how much you're willing to give up for him is always predicated on his willingness to stay with you. I mean, uh, I mean, you, you, you look no, no further than the Andrew Wiggins trade. There's no way they'd give up Andrew Wiggins without Kevin Love having verbally agreed to extend his contract. Yeah, and I think one of the main criteria for Gorin right now is the fact that he wants to be in a situation where he has uh, ball control. I mean, obviously, you know, playing a lot of two-guard, playing with Bledsoe, he wasn't being able to be a true point guard like he is. He, you know, he's very much in the mold of Steve Nash. He likes to probe offenses, I mean defenses. He likes to have the ball in his hand pretty much all the time uh, to make a, a decision late in the shot clock. He's not doing that in Phoenix right now like he did last season when he won most improved player and was third-team All-NBA. Um I'm going to throw two situations out there. Uh, I'll start with the Pacers. Obviously, Paul George may be coming back in early March. Do you think Larry Bird would be willing to make a move, uh, get rid of uh, George Hill, throw him in? Well, I think that's actually a fantastic fit. When you look at the age group around with um, uh, the rest of their team, they're, they're poised to win now. And exactly like I said, why Boston doesn't fit for me, the Indiana Pacers is a, is honestly a perfect fit. Um, I think with Paul George coming into his own, Roy Hibbert already fairly established, David West still there for the time being, he could be moved, but I think if they pull Dragic, um, it'd be interesting though because you have to be able to win now um, because he's a free agent, are they able to sign him? I think they would be able to, so this is a trade, I don't think they'd have to give up too, too much, um, but at the same time the Indiana Pacers uh, standing right now are Actually, not even that far. They're only uh, about one game out. Um, so this could be a move, well, considering how poorly, you know, the Charlottes, the Miamis, and uh, Milwaukee's. Oh, well, Milwaukee's looking a little better, but those two. I, I, I think anyone in that, um, you know, Boston, Detroit, Indiana, and maybe even outlier of Orlando has a chance to catch up for that eighth and final spot. And once they get into the playoffs, um, that could be a really dirty team. I actually think that's one of the best fits uh, we could throw out for this man. Yeah, and one, one situation that's been thrown around a lot that I don't think is a good fit is Houston. Uh, like we said, he wants to have ball control, which is not really going to work with James Harden. He's played in that system before. And here's an outlier as well. He and uh, Patrick Beverly have the same agent, so people are saying 
you know, Beverly's stats would go down if he stayed with that organization and the agency wouldn't want something like that. So it's something you have to look at. On the outside, uh, it's a team you mentioned briefly, and it's a situation that I actually really like if they can work it out. Uh, it hasn't been talked about much, but I would love to see Gorin playing with Andre Drummond in Detroit. I actually completely agree. We've heard in the in the news of late that um, the Detroit Pistons have been active, and Stan Van Gundy, as a new GM, has been active trying to find different pieces. They've even offered up Brandon Jennings potentially for Joe Johnson with the New Jer- uh, sorry Brooklyn Nets. I'll get that right one day. Um, but I think that's a fantastic fit. I, as I said, they're on the cusp. They could make the playoffs. The Indiana Pacers do provide a better overall team, assuming Paul George does come back. I feel, but. He does fit the Stan Van Gundy mold. He, he's a creative ball handler, high basketball IQ, can shoot the basketball, so he fits really well. And his uh, usage and his ability to you know, cut down the turnovers would be great there. Because um, uh, we look at Brandon Jennings, and he was playing really well at the end before he went down with his brutal injury. But he wasn't the most effective player before that. Him and Josh Smith uh, definitely were those... <clears throat> You know, pieces where they uh, they went uh, to get theirs primarily, and I think the combination of him and and DJ Augustine, who's playing fantastically for them now, can give them the ability to rotate at the point guard position, even play both at the same time. I um, I know we said that uh, Dragic does not want to play off ball as much, but you know Augustine can still play that role uh, that uh, all those other players in in Phoenix were playing. I I think it's a fantastic fit, although long term, are they gonna be able to sign him? Um, because they're th- uh, they are going to have to save some cap. Uh, uh, you're assuming that they're going to offer a max contract to Greg Monroe and Andre Drummond is f- for sure going to be a near max player. Uh, but I do think that Detroit and the Indiana Pacers are the top two fits in the NBA. Okay, and uh, you got to I got to mention this. Uh, his brother Zoran does play with him right now in Phoenix. I think you got to kind of throw him a bone and have his brother go with him wherever he's headed. Otherwise, it's just way too awkward to just have him sitting on the bench in, in Phoenix. I'm gonna ask you one last quick trivia question before we wrap up. Goran Dragic was drafted in 2008 by which team? I want to say Phoenix. But I really want to say Houston. I'm going to say Phoenix. The 45th spot, round two by the Spurs. Ah. Always the Spurs. Their their drafting is just off the charts. Uh, Phil, uh, I'll throw it back to you to wrap up. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining for another episode here uh, in the lounge for the Hoops Lounge. Please join us anytime at hoopslounge.com for all of our uh, fantastic work. We have a couple new articles by uh, new writer Justin Rowan and a few new specials. Uh, few new article ideas, show ideas, and we've been having uh, some guest appearances on some local shows, so we'll be sure to post those so you can get everything in. So for myself and Mark, I want to thank you for another episode, and keep it in the lounge. See ya.